Hey, what's up guys? John from SNS Cycle here. This is the first part of a series of videos where we're gonna teach you how to install the SNS Winter Power Package. In this scenario, we have an early twin cam Dyna model right behind me. First part, four inch cylinders. We're gonna tear down the Dyna, install the cylinders, and we're gonna show you how to do that right now. Now that we have our top end broken down and removed from our Dyna per our factory manual, we're ready to install our four inch cylinder kit. There's a few tools you'll need to do the installation. A C-clip installation tool, oil ring compressor, oil ring expander, feeler gauge, and a measuring tool. The first step in the process, we're gonna measure the actual cylinder board to make sure the spigot on the cylinder will fit in correctly and enough clearance. Let's do this now. Using the measuring tool, we're going to determine the depth of the cylinder spigot bore in the crankcase to ensure there's no contact between the crankcase and cylinder or crankcase and piston. For 99 to 06 models, you should have a minimum of one inch. We're just over an inch on both cylinders, so we're ready to move forward with the four inch insulation. Now we're ready to check our ring gaps. Before we do that, we clean the cylinders thoroughly with hot water or carb cleaner to make sure there is no debris or anything left in it from the factory. We then coated it with oil with inside the cylinder walls. Now we'll take our supplied oil rings and check the ring gaps. To identify each one, they have markings on them. The top ring is very black and has a dot right on the top of it. What we're gonna do is insert it into the cylinder by hand and take the piston and push it down into the meat of the cylinder. Please note when working with the cylinders to be very gentle and careful. Do not want to ding them or hurt them. After you have the ring within the cylinder, you take your feeler gauge and place it into the actual gap, making sure that it clears. We reference the SNS instructions for the correct ring gapping size. We'll move forward to the second ring now. The second ring is identified a lighter, a little lighter, and it has an M top on it. We'll do the same process, inserting it into the cylinder by hand, taking the piston, pushing it down, and referencing what size gap it should be within the instructions. Once completed, we'll move on to the next one. The expander rings are very thin, black with a 
chrome molly line on the outside of it. These are very fragile. Be careful when handling them. We'll place it into the cylinder. And slide it on in. We will repeat the same process for the other set of oil rings. Now that we've checked the ring gap, we're ready to install our piston rings. Before doing that, we identified both pistons. You'll note that the bigger insert in the piston is the intake side. Remember this when you're mounting or installing the pistons themselves. We went ahead and installed the C-clips on one side to remember which orientation the pistons go. Now we're going to go ahead and install the, the piston rings. The first one you want to start off with is the expander ring. It's the wiggly, kind of easy going ring. You can walk it up from the bottom. And per the SNS instructions, we want to make a W at the bottom of it. This ring will go into the bottom slot, and we'll have two other rings that go on top and bottom of it. The rail gap rings are thinner and easy to go on from the bottom for the first one. Walk it up gently. And you want to slide it right underneath the expander ring for the first one. And it will fall into place like so. Easy way to check is the rotation of it. Everything spins, it means you're on the right path. You can also check by rotating the bottom one only. That means it's set into the rails. Let's move forward to the top rail ring. Walk this one in from the top. You may fall into the top two slots. You may have to walk it out. That's okay. You want to slide it in right on top of the expander ring. Just like so. Easy way to make sure that it is in correctly as if you can spin the whole assembly by hand. Now we're ready to install our second oil ring. Easy way to identify this ring is it's a lighter shade of black. It has the letter M and the word top on the top of it. This is the direction the oil ring will go up on the piston facing up. Using our expander tool, we will go ahead and lock into the oil ring itself. And slide it over the top into the second slot. For the top oil ring, it's black, has a little dot right there. This is the orientation that it will go, the dot facing up on the piston itself. Same as the second ring, we will take our expander tool and slide it over the top into the first slot of the piston.
perfect. We've just installed the oil rings. Now that we've installed our oil rings onto the piston, we went ahead and set the oil ring gaps in their correct location per the SNS instructions. Top oil ring gap, top rail ring gap, second oil ring gap, and bottom rail oil gap. Expander ring is located right here. We're gonna go ahead and repeat this process for our second piston. Now that we've set the oil ring gaps on our pistons in their correct location, we're gonna go ahead and install the pistons themselves to the connecting rods. Make sure to coat the cylinder studs with some tubing. So once the piston is installed, it stays safe and does not chip or bang the piston itself. Using some of the supplied engine lube assembly from SNS, we're gonna go ahead and coat the wrist pin. And then we will actually put some inside the piston itself, making sure it's nice and easy to insert the wrist pin. Now that we've added engine assembly lube to the inside of the piston and to the wrist pin, we went ahead and started it into the piston itself. And we will now place it onto the connecting rod and slide it through. We've secured the wrist pin into the piston. Now we will insert our C-clip using the C-clip installation tool. After inserting the C-clip, you wanna make sure that it's seated all the way. Just take a flathead small screwdriver and push all the way around making sure that it's in its groove and it's completely seated. Good to do this on the other side also. We've secured the piston onto the front cylinder. We will repeat the same process for the rear. Now that we've installed the pistons, we just want to go back over and make sure the orientation is correct making sure the intake side of the piston is facing towards the middle where the intake would be, and the smaller side uh, is the exhaust, which would be the exhaust facing outwards. Next up in our process of the installation, we're gonna go ahead and put our supplied O-ring gaskets onto the oil dowel on each cylinder. After doing this, we'll move over to the cylinders and put the gaskets on the cylinders. With the supplied O-rings for your cylinders in the SNS kit, you're gonna wanna go ahead and put them on before putting the cylinders on and slide them down by your fingers, trying not to pull on them or stretching them, making sure they go all the way down to the base of the cylinder. Before installing the cylinders, we're gonna go ahead and uh, lightly coat each piston with some oil all the way around, including the oil rings, making sure they're fully covered with oil. We'll also do a light coat on the O-rings 
that we installed to the Dow oils. We're now ready to install our cylinders. We're gonna go ahead and start with the front cylinder first and then move to the rear. We went ahead and installed the ring compressor, so now we can remove our rubber hosing from the cylinder studs and get the cylinder and install it. You wanna be very delicate when installing these cylinders, making sure you do not hit, ding, or mar the spigot on the cylinder itself. You want a clean, smooth install. Now that we have the cylinder over our oil rings, we can go ahead and remove the compression tool and slide down our cylinder for a complete install, which you really want to be cautious when sliding it down to make it equal all the way down and not jam the spigot into the crankcase. We'll go ahead and do, repeat the same process for the rear cylinder. We have installed our cylinders. We went ahead and installed our dowel pins by tapping them in. And now we're ready to reinstall our heads using the supplied gaskets. We're gonna in, place these onto each cylinder and then we're gonna go ahead and start with the front head. We're gonna go ahead and install our front head by aligning the dowel pins that are inside the cylinder to the holes on the head, laying it right on top. Gonna to hand tighten our head bolts. Uh, we went ahead and inserted some oil into each head bolt to help secure uh, when we torque it down. And we're gonna go ahead and start with hole number one per SNS instructions. There is a diagram inside the SNS instructions. You follow the procedure for hand tightening and torquing. This is number one. And then we'll move over to number two. And number three. Number four. Now that we have got our head on and we've hand tightened all of our head bolts, we're ready to do our first torque sequence of two, which is gonna be at 12 foot pounds of torque, starting with number one. We're referencing the SNS instructions for the diagram to know which order to torque. Go over to number two. Okay, we're over to number three. And then move over to number four. We're gonna go ahead and do the same sequence at 17 foot pounds of torque. Now that we've got everything torqued, we're gonna go ahead and loosen everything back out and repeat the process. What this does is help seal the actual head gasket. So 
Starting with bolt one, we're gonna go back over each bolt at 12 foot-pounds of torque again. And one more time at 17 foot-pounds of torque. For the final step, we're going to go ahead and turn the bolt 90 degrees or a quarter turn in addition to the 17 foot pounds of torque. We're going to go ahead and repeat the same process for the rear head. We finished installing the 4-inch cylinder kit and we've reinstalled the cylinder heads. We're going to go ahead and reassemble the rest of the top end per the factory manual. And there you have it. We've reassembled our Dyna per the factory manual and we've installed the s, &S 100 inch kit. This is the first installment of our series around the winter power package. Stay tuned for the second installment where we'll be featuring the s, &S cam chest kit and the 585 cams. If you like this video, make sure to comment or like it. And if you're looking for more information, follow our social channels or always check sscycle.com.